And I say we get the game going. We've waited long enough. Too many chew tears. And let's get into it. Envy Gaming and just ended here for the ESL Cup Americas number 26. This is the round of 16. So let's get it going. Draft says... Just end it, gets first pick, first ban, and once more, they're going to be removing the flying, I don't know, man, the flying monkey, the flying rat, the flying fairy dragon. It depends on how much you like Brightwing, I suppose. But uh, Just End It is not going to be dealing with that Brightwing once more. Apparently, we're going to Cursed Hollow. That's not correct. We're going to Tomb of the Spider Queen. There we go. That looks much better. And it's up to Envy Gaming to do a ban. And we have been seeing a lot of Illidan, Sylvanas, Brightwing bans. Uh, Vikings. I'm not entirely too sure about the strength of Vikings on Tomb of the Spider Queen. It's a much smaller map, but it could be a worthwhile ban. It will actually be the Kael'thas. So we don't want to deal with uh, the Song of Fire, and uh, that's all right. We're going to pick up the Song of Ice here. We're just ended as their first pick. So NV I'm Gaming could actually go right into a Sylvanas right here. Uh, or, uh, okay, apparently they're just going to show their hands super early uh, and they're going to go for Wait a Kerrigan. Usually me. I'd want to see a team build up to it, but with the Kerrigan, would this be an Uther? It is going to be an Uther. Envy Gaming will uh, not make the sure not to let that slip through the cracks. No so Kerrigan, Uther as the first two for NV. It is a big team fight oriented map. A lot of early roam and Kerrigan really does shine in this smaller map scenario. Just end it, can't go to Glass Cannon here, uh, but will they actually want to do a little bit of counter roam? Anubarak is on the table. He's a great roamer, great uh, pusher with those beetles. Just all around, he is the number one warrior, I think. Uh, I think he's number one in the game for win rates. But uh, we could also see a flex here with a Tyrande, just trying to make sure that that does not go over the way of Envy. Uh, if it's not either of those, could be back in DPS with a Sylvanas or a Vala, uh, but it will be the Anubarak. And it will be actually a Mirrodin to the go with him as well. Throne. All right. So the Brawler King uh, is uh, reporting for the Brawl. Double tank to go for Just End It. They don't really care who their support is, but with the Brightwing ban, uh, it could actually be a Malfurion once more. Malfurion's super popular in Europe, and I haven't really seen him a lot here in NA, but if it's going to be a back-to-back -back Malfurion for Just End It, I think I'd be okay with that. Envy Gaming needs some damage on their back line. Sylvanas, uh, okay, speak of the devil. Sylvanas and uh, Vala was, was going to be the rest of that sentence. But here's the Sylvanas already. Banshee Queen to be going Victory up with uh, the, the Kerrigan. Would we want to put a warrior here? I don't think Envy needs to actually solidify a warrior. They might want to solidify a flex, though. So uh, a Tyrande or a Tassadar, I think, would go absolutely well here. They don't need another melee, so if it's not going to be a flex, it'll be a ranged damage, and they can just absolutely take whoever they want for a warrior at the end of it all. They're thinking. 90 seconds into the pool time, we're going to start chewing into it. NV Gaming will take Vala. All right, so it's not going to be a flex. It's all about getting the damage done, getting as much damage done as they can. Their warrior, uh, I don't think a Tyrael would go for NV Gaming. They might go for an ETC instead. Of course, we could also see an Arthas, a Chan, or a Diablo, or any other number of warriors in this game, but uh, I, my bet would be an ETC. Just end it, needs some damage. I also need some heals. Uh, who is left? As I said, Malfurion. Definitely a good choice here. If it's not Malfurion, likely to either be a Lili or a Rhaegar. Um, might just be a Rhaegar. Lili is going to be the lowest priority choice here, I think. I would like to see a Malfurion. If not Malfurion, then a Rhaegar. So the rest of the damage, what else can you put on the board here from Just End? It could be another Abathur, but it's not exactly the best of maps. Could be a Nova. They will go with a Flex. All right. So the Tyranda is a little bit of a heal, a little bit of a damage dealer. So this will augment with whatever I they do the choose. They could be the Rhaegar here. It actually could be the Rhaegar. If they are going to go Lili, it's going to be like a, a wind Lili, a blinding wind. They're just going to try to pump up that much, as much as they can. The auto attacks from Vala and Kerrigan would just go a little bit more of the wayside there. And then, okay, so it will just be Tyrande and the Malfurion. Going a little bit safer there at the end, Hello. but whew, they got it done. NV, last pick. Will it be the ETC? Will it be the Diablo? Don't foresee a Chen. We just don't really ever see it uh, on the side of the ocean. But uh, very well. I mean, it's still a warrior. If they go Tyrael, uh, 
I don't know. I feel a little. I feel a little uneasy about it going Tyrio. I mean, it would be Team Ghost. NV will have two death uh, passives. <laughs> ETC with a mosh pit, I think, would be absolutely fine. The only person that could stun it out after the dive would be a Tyrande. Murky hype? Murky warrior hype? Not gonna be a Sonya. Probably not gonna be a Stitches. Although if it is, it'll be a wretched bio, a putrid bile. They got 70 seconds to figure it out. Nobody's made a lobby yet. <laughs> These teams need to take some lessons here. Available warriors is Arthas, Chen, Diablo, ETC. Wow, it will be Tyrael. All right. I'm, I'm not really too much of a fan of the Tyrael solo tank. I could just be conditioned by multiple metas where he just sucked Reckoning as a solo tank. I hand. could absolutely be wrong about that. So, um, yeah. The Tyrael up against the double tank here of the Mirrodin and uh, the Anubarak, it's, it's not a counter at all to any of that. At all. It's, uh, it's more about getting into the back line, going for the Tyranna, going for that Jaina. Uh, that's what I feel what is it, like this is what's going to be happening. But that's going to be your draft. So, Maelstrom, I fully suspect, will be in effect. Divine's Shield, the Wailing Arrow, hmm. I want to say it's going to be a Reign of Vengeance. I really do think a Reign of Vengeance would fit here with the Vala. She could go Strafe if she's really feeling confident about it, but uh, I'd be more happy. I'd be more confident, I think, uh, with a Reign of Vengeance. And of course, Judgment here for Arterio. Uh, Tranquility, Starfall, Avatar. Now, just in that last round did go with Locust Swarm. If they're going to continually dive in, they might need the Locust Swarm just to survive through the combos. Uh, there's a lot of damage available there. Web Blast is huge in Europe, but uh, here, I'm not entirely too sure we're going to see it. And then, of course, Water Elemental there from the Jaina as well. Uh, and those are going to be your teams, as I said. We're going to be getting into the lobby. We are in the lobby. We're just waiting for Horse Pants, who's apparently AFK. Cannot win with these teams. Uh, come on, guys. Not hard. <laughs> Horse pants, there we go. He's back. He's back in action, ready to go. And uh, I guess we can just swap over. Let's do that. Let's see what kind of skins that we get out of this. Once more, it's going to be that demon Malfurion. It looks like I got Chew8 there in the back. Chew8's Eight's going to be the Jaina. Glorong not going for the melee assassin, but he will be playing up the Nubarak. He might as well be a melee assassin at this point. Bug does a ridiculous amount of damage. And who's on the Kerrigan? Crone is on the Kerrigan. Monkey Lamps will be the support. If you recognize some of these names, these guys did go to Heroes of the Dorm. we we'll have to see how they hold up against the big boys of Chew8 and crew. But uh, yeah, let's get to it, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, it will be game number two of today's coverage. On to the Tomb of the Spider Queen. Collect the gems, turn in the gems, summon the web weavers. Sounds pretty easy, but on such a small map, the rooms are intense. Kerrigan is going to be going everywhere. You're going to see a Anubarak just going everywhere, looking to see how many kills that they can get. The more kills you got, the better gem control you will have. Because if you take down an opponent with gems, of course, they spill out. If they're not picked up, well, they are fallen to the curbside and nobody will ever remember them at all. So big kill-centric comps are a really big favored way to go right now. And Envy Gaming with that Kerrigan first pick, uh, absolutely not allowing Just End It to uh, pick up the Engage Queen herself. But there it is. Game is up. Here we go. Game at number two of tonight's coverage. Viewers are continually climbing. Absolutely ridiculous. The Chiefs sub army. Ridiculous in a good way. <laughs> ridiculous in a good way. On the left, Jajun, Ensane, Spaguther, Crone, and Monkey Labs will be making up the team of Envy Gaming. And of course, the people that everyone is here for Horse Pants, Chew8, Glorong, B Kid, and Tiger JK making up Just End It. Spam out, just start it, more like it. My goodness, half an hour between games. A little silly, but uh, 
Here it is. We're still waiting for some of these talents, but a lot of the time you're going to see a five-man death ball mid. It's going to be a big race to the vent here, and then we'll see if anybody gets caught in the web. Horse pants, you can already see with the scouting drones. He's just throwing them out there for as much vision as he can. We got Reverberation, Ranger's Mark, Deep Chill, and Assault Scarab. Once more, the Beetle Lord of Glorong into the bottom lane. Sylvanas, so not still sure what kind of level one withering arrow she's going to take, but uh, the rest of them is Sweeping Grasp, Composite Arrows. <laughs> nice little setup here on Jejun. Uh, Fist of Justice, not a talent you see a lot of. And uh, Regen Master. So Monkey Lamps is up here with the crew. They did actually just try to gank out that horse pants, but it's not going to be any kind of kill yet. And at the same time, it's now going to be the return here. Insane and crew will actually live through the counter gank here of the Muradin Taranda room. Chu 8 and Jejun are just going back and forth. Uh, a little bit of low hit points. One, two, Crone. Can he grab this combo? Bam! It will actually land, but the funnel gets stunned out. Kerrigan is going to drop, and Chu 8 will live. Nice little delay tactic by dodging into the bottom. That will actually be the first blood there as well. Flooring and Spagither. He's going to keep going uh, neck and neck. A little bit of an army being built up here by Glorong. And the Beatles will continually assault those towers, draining them of ammo as time goes on. It will lead us into uh, some favorable positions a little bit later. But in terms of the roam, right now the counter with Muradin and Taranda is very strong up against the initiation there of the Kerrigan, of Monkey Lamps on that Uther. He did take Fist of Justice there as well. Let's take a look at Espaguta. That's going to be the stun combo, but at the same time, uh, Chu 8's body is here somewhere, but he did go down. Uh, one for one trade as both of the roamers do actually visit their lanes at basically the same time. There's not much Jaina can really do about an impending gank. She has no mobility options whatsoever. Uh, kind of the same here with Horse Pants. He has to get off a Lucky Roots. He's going to be living through something like that. Tiger JK throwing out the owl, finds Crone. Both teams are about to hit level four as the roams have come out fast and furious. Autumn lane has Monkey Lamps showing in it. So with the Fist of Justice, Monkey Lamps really wants to make sure every roam has a stun. That's what that is. He's giving up Conjurer's Pursuit for it, though, so it has to be an early game capitalization. Otherwise, by the late game, his mana pool is just really going to suffer. Now, compared to Horse Pants, who's on the Malfurion, Malfurion, with that Innervate, will just continually give out mana to his team. And uh, uh, Uther versus a Malfurion in sustained battle, I'm, I'm going to give it to the Malfurion, that one there. Nice stun and the root combo. There's nowhere for Crone to go. No Divine Shield for him yet. And that will be it for Crone as he will drop to the third kill of this comp from Just Ended. Glorang has been busy. That's 13 gems that he wants to dunk down, but Monkey Lamp says no. B Kid and Chew will come down, and is it a priority to put down these gems? It doesn't really look like it is. I guess we're just posturing for position at this point. Again, you're looking for some early gains and capitalizations in Venom, in Venom, and Protective Shield. Uh, the shield is pretty much standard this, these days, but Chu, again, he's just playing around at this point because look at this, Monkey Lance is going to be found for the counter. Chu is going to drop, but not before they get that equal kill on the Uther. Now, the problem, however, is Uther can still heal. Crone is here. They're looking for the kill on top of Glorong, and that's going to be the jump in and the combo. Anubarak is down, and now Horse Pants might be regretting coming down into this bottom lane. Jajun, however, is out of mana. Oh, dodges that stun. Really nicely played right there. Crone is going to to go over the wall following the Mirrodin, and that will be, I think, three kills right there going the way of uh, NV Gaming. Now, we do got some big roots out here. There's the stun combo. Tiger JK will actually get that kill uh, with the flare on top of the Tyrio, and that will be that. Five kills to four, and the only person I think that wasn't up there was Glauron, and uh, he's just going to continue pushing down with his little beetle army, as, uh, as he is prone to do. Level 7s is going to be slightly ahead here for Just End It. But there we go, 7s now for NV Gaming. Triple Beetles, as we said. The Lunar Blaze, the Frostbitten to go with the Deep Chill. Pretty standard stuff here. Uh, the Piercing Bolt after the double Thunderclaps. And Enduring Growth once more. No Mules here yet again. On the flip side, though, Battle Momentum for the Kerrigan. Will we see, actually, an Ultralisk? It's uh, definitely possible, but still with the battle momentum, just really reduces your cooldowns. Think of her like a pseudo-Eoden now. 
Unstable poison for the wave clear, searing attacks from the Vala, because there's really nothing else good at that level. Uh, the cleanse and now the Zealot tree as well. Increases shield duration. So you're going to be looking for imposing will at 13 from the Tyrael. And Chu, he gets envenomed. Chu, he... Nope. <laughs> does not evolve today. Uh, we'll go down to the last tick there of the Envenom. And uh, yeah, I guess NV Gaming is just going to be happy with that. They are pulling ahead and experience slightly now. Top has just been absolutely wrecked by the constant pressure. Bottom has not really suffered as much as you might have expected by a split pushing Anubarak. In fact, I would actually now recommend Goron to start participating in some of these ganks and fights because his split pushing is just not really getting anywhere. After the kill on Chu, the map positioning did slightly go over to NV, and you see that they do have their own web weavers coming down immediately with the transition to the bruisers. This will be a heck of a mid lane push because we also are now just about to ding nine. Dinging nine uh, about a quarter level ahead means that they could immediately after uh, this big push coming up hit the heroic tier. And if NV has it and just ended doesn't and they're in the mid fight, it's going to be a disastrous consequence for just ended. Glorong is still into the bottom. He's just trying to once more just try to defend out with that beetle army. Here's the bruisers and the web weavers pushing in. There goes one tower. We're going to be looking for the next. Top is pushing right into that fort as well. Horse Pants is up there. So again, we're looking at a danger zone right now. We are about to hit level 10. There's no healer here mid for just end it. The crew, however, is going to rotate Hot. Horse Pants saw this coming, wisely got out of dodge, because if he had gotten collapsed with his new level 10 squad, he would have immediately gone down. Glorong has finished up bottom. It looks like mid is also going to get cleaned up, but it will be one fort here at the seven minute mark going the way of NV. They have definitely taken the experience lead by about a half level. They will find Glorong here. Is that going to be a judgment follow up? It will not. But we do got the shield, strafe, wailing arrow, and maelstrom to boot. No heroics as of yet for Just Ended. They're going to hide in their vents and uh, try to get their bruisers as quick as they can. They have dunked down zero gems. No gems to their name, and now they're going to be taking these bruisers. That means they're giving up basically a fort almost for free. That fort is now down to a quarter. We did get 10, though. Glaurong is charging forward. He has the Locust Swarm. It's not going to be the Web Blast. He has the Sustain ready to go. There goes the Cleanse. The Cleanse on Insane into the Judgment on top of Tiger JK. The Silence Arrow will take home the kill. Duranda is down. Monkey Lance is low. Tyrael, however, will go the way of the curve. And there goes that big blow up on top of B-Kid. But that will not be a capitalization. Despite the fact that this was a great opener for NV, they will not get the better trade. Two for one by the end of it, as we have Vala just die there at the end. The AoE damage is immense from Just End It. In fact, Monkey Lamps, I don't know why he tried to jump in, but he is going to get punished, and that will even further patch up this experience lead uh, and uh, close the gap a little bit here for Just End It. They have all five ready to go, and they just dunked down all of their gems. So if they can take out this entire top gate, this Web Weaver is just going to have a heck of a field day going in. We still have no Uther on the table. And it uh, looks like he is uh, finally about to join us here. Level 11 to just a bit under 12. There it is. NV Gaming still maintaining that experience. Like, Glorong is actually going to go in, but there's no body blocking available here up against that Monkey Lamps. But uh, Locust Swarm on a 20-second cooldown. Everything else up it will be up more or less at the same time. So we might look for a big timing attack here. We do got still the Divine Shield. We still have a Strafe and a Judgment. It's all come back up off of cooldown. And everyone is just going to be start death blowing at this point. The five-man rooms are absolutely real. The last spider on the map is this bottom one, and it is starting to really work away on these towers. Everybody has those ults. Glorang's going to go in. They're looking for the stuns on top of Crone, who's going to jump immediately on top of Tiger JK. Invenom's going down as well. The Judgment on top of Chu, and Chu is going to drop. Crone in the back, however, is left to his own devices. Not nearly enough team support, and he goes down, but there goes the Tyrio as the answer as well. Horse Pants is going to get just exploded upon, but there's no one here to kind of follow up any more damage. So much effort goes into trying to take down this tier, uh, this Tyrande, and nigh, almost never does it actually work out. A great stun and root combo will take out Sylvanas, and once more, 
it will be just ended coming out ahead in these trades. They have virtually patched up the experience. They are about to hit 13, just as their opponents have now hit as well. Imposing will with that Tyrio. We were looking at that. Giant killer it will not be frost shot here for the Vala. They see that they have a double tank lineup from Just Ended. She needs those auto attacks to be a little bit more empowering. We do have now Sprint, Spell Shield, and there's the Shrink Ray as well on the Uther. On the flip side for Just Ended, Burning Rage, Improved Ice Block. Uh, Tyrande doesn't know, but I'd expect Overflowing Light. Thunder Strike for the 300%. B Kid is looking for duels. And at the end of it all, Ice Block here as well for the Malfurion. It will actually be Sprint for the Tyrande. Uh, they can, they've so far been able to heal through the damage output of the Kerrigan with those Envenoms on top of Tiger JK. Uh, so I kind of expect to see Overflowing Light just to keep making sure that that happens. But instead, it will be the Sprint for the positioning. So if Crone jumps her, she can just Sprint away. And that is hopefully the disengage that she's going to need. Now we do got blue bruisers pushing down. B-Kid will find Crone. Stun, and this could be the stun lock. Great cleanse from Monkey Lambs. We'll keep Crone up, but now Crone a little bit lower on the hit points. Does he have a fountain? Doesn't seem so, and that's basically gonna seal the deal for that fight as we need to go reposition and get ready for the web weavers that are gonna be spawning here momentarily for just ended. Tyrio's going bottom, and it does look like it will be a little bit of a split. Will just end it as split as well? Look for three forts, or are they just going to hammer home one? They do have the death ball ready to go. All five are up top. Insane is showing himself bottom, so there's likely not to be any resistance. If we can actually grab two web weavers from the team of MV, they will be able to collapse on top of this uh, death ball themselves. But uh, it's going to take a little bit. Insane does not exactly do the biggest of damages by himself. So the three-man, the four-man, yeah, the, the two-man defense. Monkey Lambs and Spaguter are playing with fire at this point because there's nobody else from their team coming up. Insane is finally done. Kerrigan is finally done. Spaguter and Monkey Lambs were not collapsed upon. It might actually be this Kerrigan. Yeah, they go right back through it and just end it. Do find Insane and Crone on the rotation. It's not going to be any kind of big stuns or a combo, but it has kept now NV a little bit more on the back foot. There goes the Spiders, and now we do have 21 gems to 19. The second fort will fall. So two Spider turn-ins is two forts so far. Mid, looking pristine, but there's no gate for the next one and uh, it's not going to get out unscathed uh, for this next turn-in. Both teams are 15, about 15 and a half here for Chu and crew, and uh, that will put us very nicely for a team fight position of 16 uh, in the next 30 to 45 seconds. Glorong, however, is thinking maybe they can actually get some big stuns here. They don't actually lock down Monkey Lambs or Crone, and uh, it will actually be a two-lane split. They're looking for 16. As soon as they get it, you can almost guarantee we're going to be going in. In fact, uh, Glorong's actually thinking about going in right now. He did save Locust Nest, so it wasn't like a big gesture. It wasn't a big uh, motion for a team fight. They were just poking and prodding, trying to keep these guys a little bit more off edge. 16 is about to pop here, just end it. They're in the position. It's getting very close, 99%, but they still need to get it done. There it is. Immediately, stone form, tenacious roots at 16 for Malfurion. Shooting star, blood for blood, and I want to say vulnerability? Is it going to be the vulnerability or the root? Not sure, but there's the root. The cleanse is good on Crone. However, once more, Kerrigan will survive the big gank. And it is actually the vulnerability with the Northern Exposure. Still, every time we find Crone, it means that he is not the one engaging. And because now we've kept the team off to the side and off to their own side of the map, another set of web weavers are coming down. Wow, actually, it's blue web weavers and Sylvanas. I didn't expect her to go down right there, but the strafe is only hitting B-Kid. The stuns are big on top of Insane. One jump deserves another. The dwarf will follow, but it's the Lunar Flare getting the kill once more on top of the Serial. Crone does not have a cleanse this time, but he will actually survive through the heels of Monkey Lamps. And now Just Ended, who I thought had actually turned in, uh, will have to just fall back and deal with Web Weavers that are pushing down their lanes. We still don't have 16 yet. There it is. Finally, NV is going to be on that tier. Blood for blood, blood for blood, looking for the third, looking for the fourth. There's the third. Come on, fourth. 
Is it going to be vulnerability? Or will it be that blood for blood? You need as many as you can to deal with these, this double tank lineup of Mirrodin and Anubarak, because they're always going to be jumping in. The blood for bloods are going to be so good against them. And there it is. Four blood for bloods and a benediction. Not only do we have the benediction, so stun, benediction, stun, auto attack a few times, stun. It's a triple stun layup here with Monkey Lamps because of that Fist of Justice at level one. So there is a lot of uh, potential lockdown to come down with that Uther on one of these tanks, but so far the tank engages have been super on point and just end it. They can almost delete somebody in one global rotation of skills. That's a very scary concept for this Uther because he has been super on point with not only the cleanses, but the heals, the divine shields as well. But it's a very defensive skill set that we've cultivated. We have yet to really see these big team fight engages enacted by Envy Gaming. They've always been reactive to a lot of these. So they are pretty much stuck on defense. And you can see that they have barely left their side of the map. They are just continually getting gems continually fending off these waves. We need a few more gems here from Just Ended if they want to get those web weavers, but Crone, Glorong is into the back. He's actually going to throw out the Locust Nest, but Crone going forward in vulnerability shield. Silence arrow as well, and the Malfurion is going to be out. This is where those blood bloods need to get work done, but it's just not enough. The AoE damage of Just Ended is too strong. Insane low hit points. There goes the Uther. Is Spagutir actually going to be able to get out of this one? Tiger JK saying no, no, but yes. <laughs> But no, I don't know. He turned around at the end there. Uh, Insane is actually also going to get out of this one as well. The collapse on top of the Malfurion was good, but three for one. Just so much AoE damage available here to just end it. Every time we clump up to support the Kerrigan, Envy Gaming has gotten really harshly punished for it. And now with three dead into the throw pit without a care in the world, just end it. We'll get that boss and they have 21 gems left to put into the cocoon as well, which means we're likely to see spiders in the next few moments here as well. Lorong actually saying no, nuts to that. He has eight. Is that enough? Can we actually turn in? Four and three is seven. We still need 10. Six right there from Tiger, and come on, Lorong. There we go. Dunk down those 10, buddy. Big Boss going to be pushing down the top. We're going to have Spiders on the back of that as well. We got a ping on top of the Giants into the bottom lane, and it's basically just pressure, pressure, pressure. Level 19 here for Just End It. They're very close to those Storm tier talents at 20, and that is going to be a heck of a fight, as it should be about a 20 to 18 matchup. It's a heck of a power boost, and it is just basically going right back into Just End This's favor as they have 16 kills to 9, they'll have level 20. These Storm Weavers, uh, Web Weavers, are pushing in. The boss has already been dealt with, but look at this rush right through to the bottom keep gate. Glorong in the lead, doesn't care that he has to tank these out. He has beetles to start soaking that damage. The gate is down, full vision here. Owls going out. The information control game is good for just end this. Here comes the rest of everyone, but Crone, he has to be the guy in the front for this initiation. But who does he jump? Glorong? B Kid, he can't get into that back line because repeatedly we've shown that doesn't work. So Crone's, uh, Crone's work is going to be cut out for him. He's going to throw the combo on top of Glorong. Immediately, shields and regens are going down. 2 8, level 20, the blink forward. Vala gets deleted. The judgment is good, though, from Glorong. He's healing up not only in the tranquility, but with his locust. And now Crone in the back on that Jaina. Uh, Jaina will live. The Kerrigan just has to get out of dodge. The Terra is out. Spagooter is done. And Monkey Lamps will collapse here as well. Uther makes the four-man team wipe. And they couldn't even take a kill from this level 20 just ended team. And it looks like they're going to live up to their name and just end it. Level 20 in just under 20 minutes. Good game well played. On to the quarterfinals. Two, eight, and crew. Congratulations, guys. See you in the next match.
So the double tank with initiate, it's just such a powerful tool. Not only will Glorion get into the back with that Anubarak, the Beetle Army soaks up a lot of damage, especially skill shots, uh, withering arrow charges. He gets into there with the Locust Swarm and he just kind of goes to work. A lot of heals coming out of Horse Pants, really clutch healing out of him to keep not only the Tyranda up, but Chu 8 as well. Four deaths on Chu, simply because of that early game, he's the most immobile hero uh, on the team. But Malfurion with 46,000 healing by the end of it, uh, far and above everyone else. It's half of that though, again, on Tyranda, the flex was a great pick and a great counter to a lot of this uh, Kerrigan engage. So Monkey Lamps and crew, they went to Heroes of the Dorm, but they are done today for cup number 26 here of the ESL Americas, Go For Heroes Cup. And um, we are just now, unfortunately, gonna go back to trailers. So I know how much you guys love that, but still, the support here is amazing. And